Zabler has a man open. Casper. Casper has the first down. down, and he's still on his feet and moving towards the end zone. Stabler to rookie tight end Dave Casper resulted in a juggling touchdown of the typical Oakland miracle type. Stabler going back to perhaps the best tight end in all of football, Dave Casper for the touchdown. Against Oakland, that's tantamount to throwing red meat to a school of sharks. Ken Stabler has engineered comebacks in much bigger games than this one. The autumn wind is a pirate, blustering in from sea. With a rollicking song, he sweeps along, swaggering boisterously. His face is weather beaten. He wears a hooded sash with a silver hat about his head. Wide open. Dave Casper touchdown. So quickly, Oakland has come back with its offensive fire. That's the beauty of Stabler. That's Stabler at his very best. And of course, Casper has, in his first starting year as tight end, has become absolutely exceptional. Great hands, great strength. So Oakland has struck quickly. It's the kind of game we anticipated. A lot of back offensive back. Here's Branch to the left against Riley, who's five yards off the line. But cop to the right against Parrish. Back is Stabler. Pumps once. Goes down the middle of Casper. Wide open. Touchdown, Raiders! Country music star Waylon Jennings was on the sidelines as the Atlanta Falcons faced the Oakland Raiders at Oakland Alameda Coliseum. Following a first quarter field goal by Oakland's Jim Breach, Raider quarterback Ken Stabler threw 23 yards to tight end Dave Casper, and the Raiders were on the move. Ken Stabler to tight end Dave Casper hookup brought the silver and black surging into the lead at 28 to 24. There was another left-handed quarterback on the floor of the Oakland Coliseum. And Ken Stabler takes a back seat to nobody. Coolly staying in the pocket, Stabler again fired to Casper, and the Raiders trailed 28 to 21. One first down. Wide open to tight end Casper. And Cincinnati is going to have to do something about Casper. They really are. The Raiders came roaring back. Dave Casper took Stabler's short pass, then was hit late by Steve Zabel and Steve King. 27-yard line, Stabler. Last week in San Diego, the Oakland offensive line gave Kenny Stabler all the time he needed. And as a result, the league's leading receiver was able to pad his statistics. Massive tight end Dave Casper already has 32 receptions for the year, and last week Ken Staber threw five touchdown passes, but two were called back, including this one to Casper. Later, Staber again went to Casper for a score, when the Chargers somehow left the NFL leader entirely unattended. 21 to 28, won by Oakland. The Raiders had to hang on to win it against two late touchdowns by the Bengals. This was the winning Oakland touchdown. A throw to Dave Casper. A key game. The Bengals against the Raiders. The Raiders cannot be stopped forever. And late in the last quarter, they took the lead 14 to 13. A perfect time for any team to fold. Dave Casper appeared to score, but Fred Bolitnikoff was called for offensive pass interference. Now from the 16, Stabler, with hours of pocket time, hit Casper again for an apparent score. We're going to have a basketball score tonight. Stabler, wide open, Casper, second touchdown. Fool everybody. The snake put it in, took it out, Casper was all alone. He is just a great quarterback, no question about it. That's 25 touchdown passes on the year. Here it is again. It really look like they're laying down, don't they? I have in front of me a half-page ad in the Oakland Tribune of yesterday. It says, Dear Oakland Raiders, we can't blame you for wanting to lie down Monday night. By sleeping through your game with Cincinnati, you probably won't have to face the Super Bowl champion Pittsburgh Steelers in the playoffs. On opening day, the Pittsburgh Steelers found the Raiders long on injuries, short on excuses, primed and ready. 
Ken Stabler's touchdowns to Dave Casper. Stabler ran his total scoring tosses to 20 tops in the entire NFL. In winning their ninth of 10, Oakland is just one game away from clinching the Western Division title in the AFC. Then Ken Stabler deftly unfolded the game plan developed by head coach John Madden and skillful offensive assistants. Able coach John Madden's Raiders fought back courageously, defying adversity, time, and the Steelers. Dave Casper capped a brilliant drive with a 10-yard score. The aroused defense controlled Pittsburgh. The autumn wind is a pirate, blustering in from sea. With a rollicking song, he sweeps along, swaggering voicelessly. Number 12, Kenny Stabler, was once again in charge of a two-tight end offense, this time with number 84, Derek Ramsey, replacing the injured Raymond Chester. This unique formation is especially effective when Stabler has the time to find his other tight end, old reliable miracle worker Dave Casper. Casper's catch helped send Denver to a 14-10 defeat that dropped the Broncos one game behind the red-hot Chargers in the AFC West. For executed the finishing touch to make it a 27-7 Raider rampage and add a little more sparkle to the city of Oakland which now boasts first place football and baseball teams, as well as cheerleaders pretty enough to make it to the pages of Playboy magazine. Ah, to be in Oakland this fall. In the NFL's 57 year history, no team ever had a better pass completion percentage than these 1976 Oakland Raiders. Ken Stabler utilized skillful Dave Casper and Fred Beletnikoff for scores as the silver and black thundered toward the playoffs 21 to 10. Moments ago, Ken Stabler's chances of getting to Super Bowl XI seemed remote. Now Stabler moved the Raiders in for the kill. Dave Casper's big catch carried to the Patriot eight-yard line. Time becoming a factor, Stabler looked to tight end Dave Casper, and the big man turned in a critical play. Now every Raider dug deep for the something extra that marked champions. As the Raider receiver was clobbered even farther downfield, next, the AFC Championship. Super Bowl XI, the Oakland Raiders versus the Minnesota Vikings. From the outset for the Oakland Raiders, professional sports outstanding organization, there was never a question about the Super Bowl. Raiders drew first blood after Dave Casper's catch was ruled out on an Earl Mann field goal. Bankston on the right side as a wing back, Stabler back to pass, a quick throw into the end zone, Casper, touchdown Raiders! Yasha Heifetz never played a violin with more dexterity than Kenny Stabler is playing the Minnesota Viking defense this afternoon in the Rose Bowl Stadium at Pasadena. Has a man open. Casper. Casper has the Watch first out. down, and he's still on his feet and moving towards the end zone. Can you believe that? Dave Casper has shortened this game up, bouncing off Mel Blunt. In Houston during the holiday weekend, Ken Stabler gave thanks for his reunion with longtime Oakland teammate Dave Casper. Casper was Stabler's main target against the Cleveland Browns. And number 87 showed definite signs of having already attended the Earl Campbell School of Running. Standpoint to see if the changing of the offense back to uh, more of the things that he has done in the past when he was with another football team, whether this uh, he feels more comfortable with this. Stabler is a competitor, and we feel that uh, he's going to, uh, he's extremely disappointed. 
Casper caught six passes for 130 yards, but as Stabler sometimes does, he forced, yet Campbell's efforts were not enough, causing the Oilers to turn to the familiar passing tandem of Ken Stabler and number 87, Dave Casper. The former Raider combination connected for 120 yards and helped guide Houston to a 20 to 16 victory. The Oilers win clinched a wild card berth against Oakland and Houston hopes the snake and the ghost can haunt their old team. And the defense squashing the Steelers, Houston's offense had a tough act to follow. He takes an outside release. He pushes him. Now he's going to come back in on an end, right in there in your screen. You, you, you talk about guys that are strong. That man is strong. You see him bounce off after he caught it? John, is it true he can't straighten his arms out? No, he can't straighten his arms. His arms are in a bent position all the time. He can't extend and straighten his arms. Frisch. Nielsen holding, and Frisch gets this one high enough to get it over everybody. There is Dave. Got to be a little weak after not practicing all week and having the flu. But he plays better that way. You know, when he was with the Raiders and he would come in and say, I really feel good, he said, I, I'm going to have a bad game. I, I said, well, go get sick. Go, go, go think of something that hurts you. He'd say, okay, and he'd do it. So I was telling Ed Biles yesterday, he said, I don't know if Casper could play. He's sick. And I said, can play? He'll be great. He'll play the best game he's ever played for you. And he and Stabler in conversation. Not with her. Well, what a great face. Okay, let's get back to football, guys. Right. Branch goes left, Chandler right. The back's release. Pastorini with time. Going to Caster. And the tight end goes in. Touchdown. Well, here's what happened on that. He had protection to throw. The Redskins got to rush him more than that. Now, Joe Lavender slips and falls. I don't know whether we can see it. You see Joe Lavender on the ground there? Slips and falls. Casper goes in. That's his first touchdown reception of the year. When quarterback Archie Manning threw a touchdown pass to tight end Dave Casper, number 87. Pass to Dave Casper helped the Oilers beat Cleveland 17 to 13. Playoff teams a year ago, all Houston and Cleveland have left is the chance to spoil the hopes of others fighting for postseason play. Former powerhouses Pittsburgh and Houston both had disappointing seasons. In the end, Houston prevailed on Dave Casper's third touchdown catch of the day. The Oilers always enjoy beating the Pittsburgh Steelers, but this time the victory brought no tangible rewards. The autumn wind is a pirate, blustering in from sea, with a rollicking song he sweeps along, swaggering boisterously. <laughs> 